$250,000 in just three months selling this kid's smartwatch that was heavily covered in the news in America. Now, I'm going to be showing you how Camille Watch, this website, did over $250,000 in just three months from June to August 2019. Hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Hey guys, it's Camille Sattar, the Ecom King, and I'm gonna be showing you the full case study, completely transparent, on how this store did $250,000. So make sure that you grab yourself a pen and paper because you do not wanna miss out on all the tips that I'm gonna be giving you and all the knowledge that this store used to generate those success. Now this video is gonna be broken up into four parts. Number one, store layout and the apps. Part two, which is what, how the product was found and what made the product a winner. Step three, which is the product marketing, the Facebook advertising and the Google advertising. And then part five, which is the conclusion. So let's get on to part one, which is the store and the apps used. So this is part one. Now, before I show you what apps were used on the website and the website itself, I'm gonna cover the product and I'm gonna give you a bit of understanding on the product before I move on so everything makes sense in today's case study. So this is the product, it's a 29 19 smartwatch for kids boys and girls it comes with gps tracking it comes with a camera so you can record you can video record to your parents now what this watch is here to do is it's here to protect your children from being kidnapped from being lost and it's also a way to connect with your children now there was a very big news press in the usa about kids being kidnapped and how this smartwatch now this bear in mind is a knockoff of the original which is what the majority of aliexpress Express do is they copy big brands and make a knockoff and that's what this product is here it's a knockoff of the product that was seen in the news things like massive news press releases in America had this watch in there and they were talking a little bit about how this watch saved loads of kids from being kidnapped and I'm going to show you the actual video a little bit later into the case study so I just wanted to give you a little bit of understanding about this product now you can see it's got 5,290 orders and it's had some great reviews too so that's a little bit of background on the watch now I'm going to show you the website so this is the Camille smartwatch website now before I move on I just want to talk a little bit about the colors used on this website because this is very very important and when I talk about the competitors in today's video this will also give an indication why it's so important now there's something called color psychology and I'm going to show you that this is a real thing so guys this is color psychology on Google now what this basically means is it's human behavior depending on which color was used in terms of taste of like so if you like blues if you see blues you're going to be more attracted to it so that's what color psychology is and it's a real thing and businesses use it all the time to take advantage of their consumers so going back to this website you can see there's a bit of color psychology being used here so you can see the Camille logo is in a turquoise color and a purple color turquoise being a neutral boy color and purple being a girl color so that just shows the user that this is for boys and this is for girls now you can see at the top they've got the launch sale 30% off click here to buy they've got a pulsating effect so it stands out when you're on it you can see in the header they've got the main pages but you can see next to the actual buy Camille so instead of this instead of them saying buy now or shop now they're saying buy Camille trademark which lets off two indications one this is a branded store and two it's a trademark item which is going to scare away other drop shippers and it's also going to give this company authority if we look down to the product page now do bear in mind guys this is a one product store now you can see they're using scarcity tactics and they're using psychology tactics that are very important and i recommend you use in your drop shipping site so the first thing is over three million children are reported missing worldwide every year so that is a fact and it's a true fact if you look on Google now what they're doing is they're scaring the consumer while shopping and then what they're doing after is they're asking a question which is do you want to keep your children safe now when parents read that in their head they're gonna be like of course I do and then this is where Camille watch is gonna sell you the solution which is what people need to do when they're doing their dropshipping sites because this is how you get into becoming a buyer mood for the consumer then you move on and you can see that they've given out the Camille TM smartwatch with a discount they're also showing you a video of how this product works they're giving you loads of different kind of factual content about the smartwatch they're telling you what it can do peace of mind 24 7 safety at all times stay in touch so they're hitting on some really 
home scariness kind of thing as a parent. So as a parent, you get scared about these things. So you can see it's it's telling you all the benefits, all the features of this smartwatch. You can always see the quality features. So the, the main points of why this is worth investing in. Then it shows the FAQs. Now you can get all the FAQs off Amazon sellers in the FAQ section. Then it's showing some credibility in terms of how to set up the um, watch in the app and then it's also showing you it's been seen on these TV websites and these new press articles now like I said this watch was heavily seen in the news and this company just copied what news programs and what news publishers were seen with this watch and they basically just put their logo on their website so their actual watch wasn't seen on there but the real one was seen on these news outlets and they have just basically copied those news outlets and put them on their website and finishing it off they've given them some testimonials and that is the reason why this website has done so well now i hope you can replicate some of the features that this website did so you can get the success that this website did the theme that was used for that website was the custom debut theme so it was a debut theme but it was customized to make it look a lot different now there's different ways you can get a custom debut theme you can either hire a developer or there's companies that customize these debut themes and then they sell them on third-party websites the app that was used was Lucky Orange. Now, Lucky Orange lets you see what people are doing on your website in real time. Now, the reason why this is so important is because it lets you know how your customers are behaving on your website, so then you can change your website to increase conversions. So if you can see them leaving your website after they've scrolled through your product page, that might be because you're missing something out. Or let's say they go to your home page and they can't find something and then they leave. So this is a great way to find out what your what your visitors are doing and how they're behavior is used on your website so you can enhance the behavior based on the feedback given in the past vitals was another app that was used now this is an app that puts basically all loads of apps into one app so for example vitals has a countdown timer in it a trust badge in it it has um, quantity breaks in it so basically all these third party apps are basically in one app and that app's called vitals now the pros of this is it basically increases your shopify site speed because instead of having to download 10 apps you download one app and then that saves, saves a lot of time also it costs a lot cuts a lot of costs out so if you're paying let's say 40 dollars for five different apps you can pay vitals fee which is a lot cheaper than that and you're basically getting it all in one app the last app was used was Hexton. Now this is a free shipping bar as you could see at the top where they put 30% off with the shop now button. So that was the theme that was used and those are the apps that were used and you can use this for your dropshipping site too. Let's cover part two which is how the product was found and how the product was made a winner. Now let's talk a little bit about product saturation because let's be honest, this product is heavily saturated in a saturated niche. So what I'm trying to say here guys is this product is in a niche where there's a lot of competition. You've got Samsung, you've got um, Apple's Apple Watch, you've got Huawei's watch that are all doing these things. So this market is heavily saturated, yet this company was still able to make a success of it. So the product industry is forecasted to grow to 90 billion by 2020. So in terms of saturation, yes, there is a lot of saturation, but in terms of growth, there's always going to be growth happening in the next five years, which means all you need to do to enhance the growth and take a bit of your little pie out of this cut is by doing a different marketing technique. And with a new marketing technique, you can basically strive for the new billions coming into the market industry. If you keep doing what everybody else is doing, you're not going to get anything. But if you take a different approach, which this company did, then you're going to be able to eat into some of this future profitability, which is 90 billion. With a unique marketing angle, anything can sell to new audiences. Apple products are a great example of this. So Apple are never the first to create an innovation. They used to be, but they're not anymore. So for example, iPhones now come with, sorry, phones now come with three cameras. iPhone weren't the first ones to do that. Samsung, all these other Chinese brands were the first ones to do it. Now what Apple did, they were technically in a saturated market. There's loads of phone companies being the first to come out with the most cameras, three cameras, four cameras, five cameras. But the reason why Apple have been the most successful with their camera is because they did a different marketing angle on it. They didn't do the same approach as all these other companies did. They took a different angle with the marketing because it was a saturated industry. It was a saturated niche getting into having the best phone 
on a smartphone, but they did it in a different angle, which is what attracted consumers to Apple. So what I was gonna do before I moved on to the next part of the video is I'm gonna show you this global graph of the growth of the smartwatch industry so you can see how it's gonna grow rapidly in the next few years. So guys, what I recommend you do is before you say, look, this product saturated or this industry is saturated that I'm selling in, look for a market forecast to see. Now, if the market forecast is looking sustainable, which basically just means it's just a straight line, there's not really any growth, or it's on a downcline, then yes, be worried. But as you can see here, there's lots of money to be made as long as you do something new and innovating in terms of the marketing. And that's what Camille Watch did to be able to create that $250,000. So guys, this is what I'm gonna show you. And I recommend you do the same for when you're testing your product. Now, all you need to do to get market graphs is typing into Google your product name and then or your product industry then market forecast and then these third party companies on Google will do the graph for you and give you their predictions something else that I wanted to show you about the product saturation was the Google trends you can see I put smart watching I've changed it to worldwide the past 12 months and you can see it's in a steady environment now if there was a lot of inclines and downclines that means it's unsteady it's on it's it's just not guaranteed because because if something's that unsustainable, you need to worry. And you can see the smartwatch industry is pretty neutral, which is a good thing, which means there's no interruptions. Now, of course, when November hits, it's gonna take a massive hit because of Christmas. Same with this year coming up as well. But you can see it's at a steady climb. To grow something that's brandable with a steady climb is always the best time to do it. Now, that's the reason, another reason why the product saturation wasn't a problem in terms of smartwatches being overdone by people because at the end of the day, it's in a steady income nobody's killing anybody else it's just too steady for any saturation so let's go over how the product was found the product was found on a big USA news TV show of the real branded product saving kids lives so guys the dropshipper saw this product on a news outlet and thought wow this has got credibility this has got current tension this has got current trending so what they did was they searched into Aliexpress the smartwatch for kids and they found a knockoff version of it and thought let's run with it because it's currently trending and it's currently highly in the news so let's go for it too. The dropshipper took note of this and searched for a knockoff on Aliexpress and this happens a lot of the times with dropshipping and with Aliexpress dropshipping. A lot of people will see things in the news or see things in the public and then use that as a kind of, 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 a, of an enhancement to then sell their own one. Because the product had loads of attention, because of the US news outlets, the product had a high demand and trend. So with all this publication and press release, the product was in everybody's backs, back minds, which means if they were to see an advert about it, they'd be like, okay, yeah, I remember that. And yes, I need to take action because my kids need protecting too. So that's the reason why this product was also a great product. And that's another reason why this dropshipper used this product over everything else they could have used. Before I move on, I want to show you this article. And you can see here a nine year old boy used his smartwatch to escape a kidnapping. And you can see in this article, they're talking about how these smartwatches for kids are saving lives, saving kidnapping, saving children getting lost. So I'm just going to show you this article very quickly and show you the real watch. So this was one of the watches that was a real branded watch that was doing really, really well. And of course, the drop ship it did a knockoff on Aliexpress and replicated the success so what made the product a winner number one it hits the emotions of parents anything to do with parenting comes involving your kids now with your kids they're your first priority and they're your everything so for people to see this it hits the emotions of their parents and gets them in a vulnerable position to buy something based on a true recent story. So I always say to people, true stories always sell. A story that's good and true will always sell, especially if there's emotion enhanced into it, which there is with this product. In the back of the mind of the parents. So with the parents, they're living their lives vulnerable with the back of their mind saying, look, let, this is what's happening out there and I need to do this for my kid. So just think of it from your point of view where you should be doing something, but you haven't, but it's in the back of your mind. So when you see things that are related to it, you're like, okay, yeah, I need to do it, I need to do it. This is the same way these parents are feeling when they didn't buy, when they didn't go and buy that watch. They're thinking, okay, if I see it again, I'm gonna buy it because I need to buy it. And it reinstates that emotion again. 
The product solves a mass problem. So I'm going to show you an article in a minute about how the majority of people have kids. So that's a mass problem. If the majority have it, it's a mass problem. It's a never ending mass problem. And also before I carry on, I just want to say kidnapping and children going missing is increasing year and year and year and year, which means products like this will be forever green. The audience was big and easy to target. So to target parents and to target parents that have kids is never been easier than it is today with Facebook interests and Google keywords. The target market was already warm traffic. So what I mean by this is the target market was already have, has already seen this news outlet and especially in the US and when I get onto the target and on the product, I'll be explaining why it's such warm traffic because with this product, the dropshipper only targeted the United States, which means everybody in the United States, the majority saw this press about the smartwatch saving kids from getting kidnapped and getting lost. So the market was already warm to this concept of getting your kid a smartwatch to protect them. So guys, I found this Cora article online. Now Cora is a very, very trustworthy place. There's a lot of professionals, a lot of journalists on here. And this and this kind of Cora quote was, was validated with articles too. And you can see here about 89% of people become parents. And of course with parenting becomes kids that are vulnerable and obviously with um, mass kidnappings and, and, and stuff like that, kids getting lost becoming even more of a problem each year on each year on, which is a sad thing to happen, means this industry, this product is gonna be forever green and forever profitable and forever in demand. So I always recommend doing competitor research and this is what we also did with the product. Also look at what the big established brands are doing, not dropshipping brands. So the reason why I say look at established brands over dropshipping brands is dropshipping brands are nowhere near as big as a established brands in terms of revenue and profit so look at the big guys and copy what they're doing and see the kind of things they're doing which is enhancing their brand and their establishment look out for the following so when i show you the competitor one of the biggest competitors to this watch brand look out for these following things color scheme product page sections. So this is one of the competitors and one of the biggest competitors in the kids smartwatch protection watches. So you can see here, the opening scene of the website is showing kids in action, having fun with the watches on and feeling free and safe. And showing parents being able to see their kids and see what they're doing. It also shows you the key highlights of the product, why to pick the brand, which is your testimonials, how the product works and the key features, which is there. And you can see it's also be, been featured on these websites. And as you can remember, the Camille Watch website, which is the case study website, had all of these brands on there, on their featured on. And like I said before, this brand was the real brand which was seen on these TV outlets. Then Camille Watch copied the brands that they were seen on because basically they're trying to say it's the same watch. So technically we've also been seen on these TV awareness shows as well. So that's basically what I'm trying to show you here. And look at the colors on the website. You can see again, the turquoise, the purple, and also they've added in a, a kind of yellowy orange color. It's to show that it's a neutral website, which means neutral genders, which means boys and girls. So guys, if you take a look at this website, and have a, have a real feel for it. You can see a lot of similarities on how this website was constructed compared to the Camille Watch website. Camille Watch website used a lot of the enhancements of this website, took a lot of inspiration from this website to obviously make a success with theirs because this website is doing very, very well. And that's what I mean by copying the big brands because these are legitimate brands with real products and they're not drop shipping stores. And you can see the quality of the store is a lot higher. The next thing that I wanted to show is I wanted to show one of the biggest competitors on Amazon selling this kid's smartwatch. Now the reason why you don't need to be worried about Amazon sellers, because I always hear, what about Amazon, what about Amazon, what about Amazon? Number one, Amazon don't do paid marketing, which means that you'll only know the products if you know about them already and you're searching for them. Number two, the way they're laid out on their website is completely different to how it's laid out on the Camille Watch website. So you can see here straight away, it is nowhere near as well presented than it was on the Camille Watch website in terms of breaking it down psychology. And that's the reason why that brand is killing this brand out in terms of Amazon selling. So that's why you don't need to be worried about Amazon sellers because you've got the psychology advantage, you've got the marketing advantage, and that's why you should never be worried about Amazon sellers. Let's cover part three, which is 
the product marketing, which is your Google advertising and your Facebook advertising. Let's go on to the video creative. So I'm gonna show you the video creative in the next few minutes, but first I'm gonna tell you about the few things that you should look out for, and these are the reasons why this video was so successful. It focused on the news outreach, which number one, builds authority. The next point is it showed a real horror story, which gets the viewers in an emotional state. Step three is, Focus on how the product saves lives and protects lives. Gets viewers in a buying mood because at the end of the day, they're seeing the problem, they're seeing the solution. Now they're open up to buying a product if it meets their pricing. Step number four shows users testimonials. So what they're doing is they're showing other parents with their kids having this product, which basically makes them feel like, look, if, if this works for somebody else's family, it'll work for my family. So this was the ad copy of the Camille Watch Facebook page. So you can see straight here, it says one mother's incredible story inspired the creation of the children's GPS smartwatch with a shocking face, protect your child. This was literally just a two liner ad copy. And I've always said to a lot of my students, two liners will always work if there's emotion involved. So straight away, it's covering one mother's incredible story so straight away it's going to resonate with mothers watching this number two it's talking about how this smartwatch is saving children's lives number two it's saying protect your child and then basically go to the website to protect them number two it, sorry number three is protect your child with camille's um camille's watch today with a trademark symbol they're showing the five star rated eight 4.8 out of five stars by customers that's just to build a bit of trust with customers this psychology trick here with the ad headline has been used by a lot of drop shippers now what this does is it builds trust by saying look these are the reviews we've got you're not giving yourself a five star out of five star review because that looks way too biased and way too good to be true so 4.8 is still a very very good review and very good star review but it's more realistic and people can say you know what that probably is about right they've also used a learn more button instead of a shop now button because number two they don't want to be as salesy which means it's going to inc increase the conversion rate the click-through rate because at the end of the day they don't feel like they're being sold to they just want to find out more and if finding out more meets their expectations they will then buy so the learn more button is a very good way to increase your ctr by not being a hard seller now I'm gonna play the video for you and show you how this video was so successful. So guys, I'm going to be explaining how this video ad, and yes, it was a long video ad, it was around about 1 minute and 52 seconds. Now the reason why it was a long video ad, there's a lot of different reasons why, and there's a lot of pros why, and this hopefully inspires you to increase your video ad time, because there's a lot of pros to this. So number one, they start the video ad, and this is very, very important, showing the problem, which was there was a kid that got kidnapped, 
and basically they're showing you how 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 big the problem was there was police involved they showed you real life cct footage showing you how real this can be they're showing you in a real case scenario you just being out with your child and this could happen at any time then they show how the product saved the kids problem with their kidnapping then they showed other people using the product other different kind of families using it showing you that it's not just for one kind of family it's for all types of families doesn't matter what your job is doesn't matter what you do doesn't matter how old you are as a parent it doesn't alienate anybody being a parent it shows every parent in every scenario then it also shows you all the features of the watch how the watch is used it talks a little bit about, it doesn't talk, but it shows you that the watch is waterproof. That could be something that they're worried about. Oh, okay, is this watch waterproof though? They showed it had an IP rating, which is amazing. So the way they broke down this video psychology, if you break it down with yourself, with a pen and paper, how they structured this video, that's why this video got such a high CTR and was so successful, guys. So let me cover now with you the Facebook strategy that was used. Now, the reason why I put ad settings number one is because the settings that were used in the campaign and this was the first campaign used so I'm going to be breaking it down in different campaigns so it's fully clear and you understand the kind of marketing structure they used to make this a successor so first off you optimized for the engagement so they optimized with engagement now the reason why they wanted to do an engagement campaign was because one is going to build a massive brand awareness again so they want to get it out to as many people and obviously with engagement campaigns it's a lot cheaper to reach more people than it is with the conversion and what the engagement is going to do is it's going to warm up these people so what it's going to do is people that have already seen this campaign before in terms of in the news they're going to see it from this advertiser and it's going to get that um, kind of storytelling in the back of the minds warm again to get them warm to buy and that way they're building video views so they can do lookalikes based on video views so what they're doing is they're just basically trying to warm that market again it's already warm but they're going to get it as warm as they can to then sell to because they don't want to come across salesy the next thing is they started the campaign at midnight the location was the united states so remember they only target the united states because in America, that's where the majority of the press release was taken. So everybody in the United States, the majority of people they're gonna target, some of them are not gonna see it before, but the majority will have seen these articles and these press releases before. So in terms of getting them to buy, because normally it takes seven times to see something before you buy something, that is a fact. So if they've already seen it three or four times by different press releases, them being seen it by this advertiser a few times is going to slow down the conversion, sorry, increase the conversion window, which means they're going to get sales quicker and cheaper. Age 25 to 61, so they're really targeting the, the, the parents. So they did this all based off factual content, what ages are parents majority starting from, 25 to 65, are the age ranges the majority of parents are from now the reason why 65 was included was because obviously you want to target grandparents that want to buy this for their granddaughters their grandsons so that's the reason why that age is there gender both obviously you've got moms and dads so you don't want to alienate one gender language english usa so because this was targeted just in the usa you want to be speaking in the english usa language of course not english um let's say english uh, British English basically so the next thing is excluding so they excluded drop shipping they excluded Shopify they excluded Amazon and they excluded eBay so the reason why they did this was because they didn't want other drop shippers copying them they didn't want to get found in the ad library for this topic which is drop shipping they didn't want to do it for Shopify and they also don't want people that are in interested in Amazon or eBay being seen by because that way they're going to want to go to those websites instead and obviously buy from them so excluding these kind of interests will increase the conversion rate and will increase your cost per result so that's why this was done let's talk about the ad settings too so this is more in depth on how the campaign was structured so in terms of the interest they use parenting interest so things like mother care pampers um anything in terms of anything to do with parents was used watches things like smartwatch you can literally target smartwatch and then you can narrow it down by parents that was also used kids so in terms of targeting kids was also used toddlers you can actually do an interest on facebook called toddlers in the ages of four to ten or something like that then they also did broad targeting which is like no interest targeting or interest that have a high um, reach potential but because they're so broad the next thing is one interest was used per 10 ad sets they did one interest and one ad set and then another one and then another one and then another one 
broad interests only so they only did broad targeting because they wanted to target as many people as they can and because this is such a broad product they can target anybody in the parenting or childhood industry or kind of audience you suggested interest so guys you suggested interest this company also uses suggested interest this way you're going to get great interest and facebook's really good with recommendations these days with the new algorithm changes so lifetime was five days so they did a five day campaign with these ppes because they wanted to build brand awareness and those video views so they could do retargeting with lookalikes they did one creative per the campaign so they just used one creative in that campaign and the reason was because it was a long creative and it was a solid creative and there's they literally put everything in that campaign you could put sorry they put everything into that creative they could have put in there to be successful now let's talk about the facebook ad metrics so if you haven't already i would recommend you go watch my facebook ad metrics because this will talk to you about what metrics matter in this campaign and also what metrics matter in your campaign Campaign. so I'll leave the link in the description and in the cards so you can watch this video now let's talk about the Facebook ad settings for campaign 2 because there was another campaign used for this product and this campaign let's talk about Facebook ad settings for campaign 2 so there was a there was loads of campaigns used but this is the settings that were used in campaign 2 so optimize for purchase start at midnight so now they've built the brand awareness now they've built the video views now they've built now they've seasoned the pixel so the target is going to be a lot more better now they're moving on to trying to get those sales in the door location united states because obviously the press release was in the united states age 25 to 65 gender both so a lot of these were the same just purchase was the optimization language english y'all exclude drop shipping shopify amazon and ebay i've explained that on the previous slide now let's talk a little bit about the settings again so now what was used was the parenting watches kids and broad so pretty much a lot of these things in campaign two were the same because all that was changed was really just the objective being purchased but there was a few other things changed this time there was one interest per 15 ad sets instead of 10 so obviously now we're targeting and we're trying to capture more people and you're trying to get that data a lot more aggressively with the purchases broad trusts were only used again guys you suggested interests and budget was $150 lifetime two days then assessed to kill to scale so the whole budget used on a daily basis to start with was $150 and there was 15 ad sets so you can imagine that's $10 per ad set the lifetime was two days with this campaign and obviously after two days there was assessing in terms of when to, what should have been killed and what should have been scaled depending on the metrics creative was one again so there was only ever one creative use which means ad copy thumbnail and ad headline because it was a solid one and it was working and just before i move on i just want to say if you're using long ad creatives like a long video then it's not going to get um, fatigued as fast because facebook want you to publish long videos because it builds a more it builds a better relationship with the audience so if you build that long ad video then facebook isn't going to fatigue them as fast let's talk a little bit about how this was scaled so how this got to a place where i was making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in three months so lookalike audiences were used and these were the metrics that were put onto before lookalikes were used so this is when the lookalikes started to hit into place so video views 75 percent when there was 10,000 to 15,000 video views at 75 percent that's when the lookalikes were initiated for that video views for 95 percent was the exact same as soon as it was 10,000 to 15,000 they were then taken into ad sets then view content so as soon as you've got 1500 content that's when those lookalikes were taken into action again with the ad sets 500 add to cart that's when then the lookalikes were done for add to cart then purchase as soon as i was 200 purchases the lookalikes were then created for the purchase objective so now let's talk a little about how the lookalike audience setup was done so one percent two percent three percent four percent five percent six percent seven percent eight percent nine percent and ten percent so there is different percentages in terms of lookalike audiences now this can get very complicated you might not understand this but i'm going to cover this on a different video in terms of lookalike audiences and if you don't quite understand what it means now i recommend you do a little bit of research because it is quite complicated and i don't want to go too into it in today's video because it'll take too too long so there was there's different percentages based on the audience so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there was united states so when you build a lookalike audience which is custom audience lookalike audience 
The United States was the only country because obviously that was the only one that was used in these campaigns. Then there was 10 ad sets made and there was 1% per ad set. So in one ad set, there'll be 1% and then in another ad set, there'll be 2% and there'll be different percentages per ad set. Now, again, this was all done per lookalike audience. So there's obviously different lookalike audiences. You've got video views, you've got view content, you've got add to cart, you've got purchase. So all those different lookalike audiences, there was 10 ad sets made and there was 1% in each ad set. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I hope that makes sense, guys. If you don't quite understand leave your questions in the comment section below but i'm just going to go over that again so there's different lookalike audiences you've got video views you've got view content you've got purchase you've got add to cart and then you've got initiate checkouts so what that what what was done was is there was 10 ad sets made for each different objective so view content add to cart purchase and then there was 10 ad sets and in each ad set there was each percent one percent two percent three percent four percent five percent six percent eight percent to hit different funnels to hit different sorry to hit different audiences in that funnel and then that way you can scale very very aggressively cbo daily budget was 200 dollars. now the reason why there was a cbo for this kind of structure in terms of the lookalike audience setups is because if you're putting each percent in an ad set normally with lookalike audiences you'll get maybe three different percentages that work the best and what most people do is they end up grouping them up and that's what was done in this case study too so the cbo was done because obviously cbo is campaign budget optimization which means the budget will be spent based on what is working and of course depending on the lookalike different percentages in the funnel work the best so that way you're not wasting your money on let's say 10 percent if 10 percent is the worst one all the money will be spent on the ones that are performing the best and because there is 10 different options the cbo is going to work out about four to three that are working the best and spend that money efficiently Creative that worked the best. So basically the lookalike audience, there was actually two creatives, one creative for campaign one, creative for campaign two. So the creative that worked the best based on those two different creatives was used for the CBO. Now let's go over the Google display ad settings. So those Google ads used for this brand too, guys. So I'm gonna get onto that in the conclusion part of the video in terms of why this was used and why Google ads was a good option for this company. So platform was search in terms of setting it up. You're doing search network. You're not doing Google shopping. They did just search. So basically when you search for a keyword, you'll see an ad and then you'll see the link at the top that says added and next to it in green writing. That's what that means. So those ad groups with 10 keywords with exact match in each ad group. So what an ad group is basically keywords in an ad group. Now exact match basically means if you basically put a keyword to say smartwatch, it has to meet that exact phrase. So if you do, let's say for example, a broad match, something like smartwatches, um, for children would be part of that keyword. So an exact match means anything that keyword is, it has to meet that exact word. So that's what was used in this campaign. The location again was United States because that was the location that did the best and obviously had the warm markets in it. Then the age of 25 to 55 because the majority of Google ad users are obviously in terms of people that search on the Google platform are between 25 and 55 that are parents. And again, this was all done with research and you can use the research by just Googling these things. Gender was both, of course. Then in language was English USA again because obviously it's the USA they're targeting. Negative keywords. So negative keywords is like excluding interests on Facebook. So a negative keywords are keywords that you do not want to be ranked for. So things like Wish were used, AliExpress, Amazon, and eBay. So when somebody basically types into Google, uh, let's say for example, one of the keywords that were used in the campaign for this company was smartwatch then nothing to do with Wish is gonna come up. So in terms of Wish, nothing's gonna come up. It's gonna exclude those things. So you're gonna get the best, basically, um, when you spend the money for keywords, you're gonna get the best result because these other things are not gonna get involved. They're not gonna interfere with the results that you get. So that's the reason why these keywords were in the negative exact match. And again, these were exact matches. They weren't broad, they were exact to those words. Let's talk about the settings too. So settings two in terms of building the campaign. So the campaign was a sales campaign campaign the type was search again search displays so when you search for keywords the ad that comes up at the top in terms of the link that's what the search is then we did website visitors as the goal so it's different goals you can set then in terms of the network it was search network the budget was 30 and then the bidding was a maximized click so you can basically change what was bidded on and the bid for this was maximized clicks the cost per click bid limit was 50 cent now based on different products 
depends on what bid you should put in. Depending on how saturated a keyword is or how heavy this keyword is, depends on what kind of bid you should be putting into it. But normally with Google and this campaign, you start with a low bid and then you assess based on the search. If you get, if you basically rank for the top of that bid, then you don't need to increase your bid. You just keep it at 50. But if you're not ranking number one, you might increase your bid to $1 because that way you'll rank at the top of the network for your ad. Because obviously with search ads, you rank either at the top, you rank four down, or you rank right at the bottom. If you're ranking, if you wanted to rank at the top and you put a $50, sorry, 50 cent bid in and you're ranking at the bottom, you might want to increase that to whatever the top of the competition's doing to get the top spot because you want to be seen at the top. So I hope that makes sense, but don't worry guys, I'm going to get onto the Google ads training in a little bit so google display ad killing so let's talk a little bit about when to kill these google ads and these campaigns so if a ctr is normally lower than four percent you just want to get rid of straight away you want to make a new creative and launch again now unless now there is exceptions guys it was a profitable campaign so that in this in this whole with with camille watch with the campaigns they ran there were profitable campaigns so they kept them running keywords with less than 300 impressions you keep them going so you just want to make sure that if you've got if you've got under those impressions it means that the the the, the ad words and, and the keywords haven't had enough time to kind of get that data to be assessed on killing or not keywords with a low bid so it couldn't rank so like i said before if you're putting a bid in at 0.50 cent and you're not ranking for the top of that keyword then of course it's not fair the ctr is going to be a lot lower because people are not going to see your your link because you've ranked too low so people can't get to that link so that's obviously not fair so then you basically increase the the bid and then you assess this again after a few days now let's talk about the google display ad scaling so how do you scale google ads and how did this company scale the google ads the only keywords and ad groups that were scaled were profitable so in terms of breaking even anything that broke broke even just basically got reworked again it didn't scale they just reworked on what was not working and then basically tested it again and if it did make a profit they scaled but anything that broke even didn't scale normally with facebook ads you can scale things that broke even because maybe you need to get better data or your season and pixel with google that wasn't the same case scenario so budgets were increased by 10 to 30 percent depending on the profitability this is the same with facebook depending on how profitable a campaign is depends on how far you should scale it and that was the same tactic used with google ads for this Camille Watch website. More keywords were tested. Keywords that were working were changed from exact match to broad match. So this is a very common way to scale Google campaigns. So let's say you're using keywords like smartwatch and it's an exact match and it worked really, really well. You're getting good profitability out of it, good ROI on it. Then you may want to change it from a from an exact match to a broad match because you're doing really, well, really, really well with it. Let's see what Google can do with a broad match to scale. So it's like doing no interest targeting or basically making broad interest. As soon as you've got the data with your Facebook pixel, you can start to do more broad targeting because the, the pixel knows what it's doing. The same with Google. If you've got keywords that are working really, really, really well, you can change them from exact match to broad match because Google kind of know what to do with the website tracking conversion data. So that's why it's very, very important that you change them from exact to broad as soon as you find something that's working and that's exactly the same that was used with website camille more locations were tested with profitable keywords for example keywords that did really really well with google search ad sorry you're searching with intent so if you type in for example smartwatch you're typing that in with intent to see what's on the internet or see what's out there to buy so in terms of the press release it didn't matter so much with google ads because like i said it's all about searching with intent facebook's completely different you're basically putting in front of people's faces and you're saying look this is our ad with google it's based on searches so it's searching with intent so that's why these other countries were used for google because all, the, all these other countries it doesn't matter if they saw the press release because with google ads they probably didn't see the press release because remember it's searched with intent not with the okay this is our ad you must have seen it before in the news we did canada united kingdom and australia because they are the top gdb countries and the ones that do the best normally on google ads so guys make sure that you go and watch my google free course because at the end of the day everything that i've just gone over with the google if it's not made sense or you're a little bit confused on what i'm talking about or you don't quite understand google and you want to use it then go watch my free course on it i highlight everything in depth and i'll leave a link in the description and in the cards for you part four the conclusion now this is going to be where i'm going to give you guys all the takeaways you can take away from this case study and how you can use some of these strategies to replicate the success with your product now let's talk a little about the conclusion and what you guys can take away from this test products using multiple advertising platforms now this is very very important 
If you're just using Facebook, you're leaving money on the table, use Google as well, use YouTube as well. I've done all of these. If you're interested in using YouTube, it's by far one of the most underrated platforms at the moment, and it makes so much money for dropshippers that are doing it correctly. And if you want to learn more about YouTube ads, I've got that on my YouTube channel, so go out there and look for it. It's called YouTube Ecom Ads. Now, like I said, if you restrict yourself to one advertising platform, if that doesn't go well for one day, then what are you going to do? If you have a backup, a plan B, then you're going to guarantee yourself the best case scenario. It's like when you build a table. If you build a table with one leg or two legs, it's not going to stand. So you need to have four legs, which is the same case scenario here. Use different advertising platforms to guarantee sustainability. And that's the reason why. Now, of course, in terms of leveraging different advertising platforms, as soon as you see a success on Facebook, take it to Google and give it a shot if it doesn't work well for a few ad groups then just stick to facebook but it's worth giving it a go make your store clean and branded it's simple so basically at the end of the day guys you saw with that with that with that um camille watch website that i'm using as the case study it was clean it was branded and it was simple it's as simple as that and that's literally how they got success they got success because it was clean it wasn't hard you gotta remember their target audience was parents and parents ain't very tech savvy the majority of them so they need something that's simple clean and easy to use so the user friendliness was very very important guys take out extra buying steps then them straight away to check out so basically here there's a lot of people that that build websites with ecom and they put too many steps involved with the buying step process and and that just puts people off. People want an easy way to buy something. They don't want to have to fill out loads of different things. So make the buying steps so simple. Make the funnel simple and easy to use. Price your products based on perceived value to increase profit margins. So this product sold for a fortune. So it was on the website for a lot of money. It was on the website for a substantial cost and it was bought for about 40 to $30 cheaper. So they made roughly around about 30 to $50 in profit margins on the watch guys. And, they, and like I said, it was all because of the perceived value. Now the perceived value is, I'm gonna save my kid from getting kidnapped or lost with this watch, which is a one-off payment. So that's what I mean by perceived value. They could have charged a lot more for it, but at the end of the day, they wanted to be competitive too. Sell something with current emotion tension. So guys, products that always do well and will always make a lot of money very fast are products that have current emotion tension. So something that's got tension and trend means that people are interested and people are ready to buy. The same with fidget spinners. As soon as they came out, everybody bought them. Anything with tension and emotion is great, especially if you want to make money Re in, a, in a very short period of time like this website did they did two hundred fifty thousand dollars in just three months because of the emotion and the tension involved 